One of the things, of course, which you have to know about with the royal family is that, okay, they come out and they do public engagements. They open something, they unveil something, they visit a hospital, they visit a regiment, they go and do something with a charity. But they're doing an enormous amount at home and sometimes chairing meetings and probably the work that they do out of the public eye is just as important as what they do in the public eye. And in the case of Catherine, uh, I'm not at all surprised to hear that uh, uh, while she's at home in Adelaide Cottage, she is um, making plans and in touch with people, probably doing the occasional Zoom meeting and telephone calls and planning for things. And then, of course, a lot of these projects do have then a public face because it leads to something where you can do an engagement in the public eye. So, yes, this is all very good news indeed. One of the things which is very interesting, again, about the royal family, I mean, when Princess Anne was coming on the scene, Prince Philip said to her, you'll have a, a lot of requests to do things. You should definitely choose something which very specifically interests you. So, in other words, when members of the royal family aren't being summoned to help the king or queen, they can actually pursue their own interests. And so, yes, the Early Years Project is something very close to the Princess of Wales's heart. And it, it's involved with the um, early months, weeks and months of a child's life when the, you can observe all sorts of, um, I don't know, sort of physical and psychological traits and things, and you can get on top of those very early. So it's a, it's a very important thing. And I'm not at all surprised to hear that she's throwing herself into that. I think people will, of course, be looking forward to seeing her actually out on an engagement at some point. Um, you know, I would urge people actually not to push her too much. You know, she's probably been through, you know, quite a big operation and needing time to recover. Uh, it may well have all sorts of implications, you know, that she needs to sort of think through how she's going to do things in the future. Um, you know, perhaps not lifting heavy things and all that sort of thing that you have to do after an operation. I think, you know, she's done such an amazing job as Princess of Wales and before that as Duchess of Cambridge that I think if she needs, if she happens to need another month or two, well, so be it. But um, do let's let her get well and get better in her own time and and stop sort of persecuting her. You know, the... the uh, the things that have been said about her have been unbelievable. That must have had a very, um, you know, bad effect on her, to be quite honest. I think it would be upsetting for anybody, quite honestly. Um, the days when your chart, you know, with your medical history was at the end of your bed, as, as seen in films like Doctor in the House, is well and truly over. Uh, it is important, very, very important, that uh, there is confidentiality in all medical matters. Uh, uh, just to give you a historical example, I mean, there was an enormous amount of criticism on Lord Moran, Winston Churchill's doctor, who produced a whole book uh, about his patient after he died, in which he revealed a lot of things that he was going through during the war on the grounds that it was historically important. But going back specifically to Catherine, I mean, yes, this is absolutely outrageous. And you can see exactly, well, I, I, I would suggest that you can see exactly what's in the mind of the person who is trying to steal these papers, that they will make a lot of money in exposing what what actually happened in her operation. And, and that's to nobody's advantage at all. That's absolutely disgraceful. It's one thing to take a, a lovely um, moving film of somebody coming out of a, sh a farm shop at Windsor uh, looking happy, as opposed to exposing uh, very, very private medical details. Well, the London Clinic is a big hospital and employs a lot of people of very many, I should think, very many various nationalities and because this story is so big I mean I understand that they try to access them when she was there but anyhow there's a lot of people there it's such a big story that it, it could be anyone because they're so carried away with the story and it, it was obviously just too tempting to resist but presumably they were caught um, or, or, or somebody spoke about it and they and they were it was found out at least the London Clinic have admitted that this happened. I think she'll be very upset because uh, remember when she went into the King Edward the Seventh Hospital when she was ha had preeclampsia very very badly and when when she was pregnant and she needed to go in there for like forty eight hours and one of the nurses accidentally put a prankster through to her and that was a terrible situation and in the end the, the nurse committed suicide. So Kate is probably feeling extremely delicate about this sort of thing. And I should think 
she, she's she's very very uh, fraught and upset about it. I think that, that King Charles will be extremely annoyed. Um, I would imagine that would be his natural reaction. And um, what what he's going to do about it, I don't know. He he'll let his staff deal with it, but. I mean, he understands how the world works, you know, probably better than most people because he's right up there. And he will probably say to uh, uh, Kensington Palace staff, you know, they've got to find a way of dealing with this that makes Catherine's life, you know, viable and possible and and not not so much of a nightmare. But I think that once she's out and about again, well, it's got to die down. It, this will die down. It can't keep up like it is at the moment. Remember that, you know, he still has the early trauma of what the media did to his mother. And that's a very acute and very major factor in the way that Prince William thinks. Um, you know, you can argue all sorts of things about how and why Diana died. Uh, again, conspiracy theories there, of course, but the, the paparazzi definitely played a part in the terrible accident in which she died in the tunnel. Wasn't the only thing, but it was a feature. And so Prince William has been brought up all his life with a deep and lasting suspicion of the media and the press. And you can understand why. So you have a huge amount of things for to worry about. But of course, in addition to that, the, the, the modern phenomenon, which is something that I've been trying to grapple with a little bit and come to terms with myself, is, is what's going on in things like TikTok and uh, and these chat show hosts in America speculating and producing huge and unfounded rumours, which then comes out on the television and they have millions of followers, these people. And a little bit like The Crown, as I'm afraid I've said before, you know, the, the, the fictional version or, or the narrative as produced by these people, it sort of becomes the narrative and people believe it to be true because they've seen it and it's gone into their heads through a, a source that they kind of trust which is very, very worrying. And I just do not know what you do about that. I really don't. The palace is looking to hire a new communications assistant. They've advertised for a communications assistant, £25,000 a year. And, and maybe that is an area in which they need a little bit more help. Well, I'm sure they do, because, of course, you know, things change the whole time. Uh, every time the, there's a new scientific development, there's a possibility of... Uh, of, uh, you know, of a problem. I mean, it's a little bit like when you have internet banking, you suddenly have sort of internet scammers and people who get into your account and remove your money and things like that. Or every time there is a positive development, there is a problem uh, attached to it. So uh, let us hope that they find somebody who can control this. And it's very difficult, I suspect, to control it, especially now with things like AI are taking over so much. I mean, it, 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 we are living in a very, very complicated world, but good for them to get somebody in to at least address it and see what can be done.